And disclaimer, this might kill your camera. Photography's changed and it's not because of AI. Since COVID, there's been a huge shift in what we're doing in the industry. It was kind of coming before, but I was a denier. And now it's here. So I'm going to help you understand what you need kit-wise to be able to do this sort of work. Now, Small Rigs reached out to me before I made this video and I asked them to send me this kit. They've sent it to me and I'm going to give it away for free to one of my patrons. So if you're on the Patreon account, we're going to try and do some sort of raffle thing where I just pick your name and post it to you. So keep an eye on your DMs. Now, many, many moons ago, I was a photographer, a stills photographer. I shot stills, just stills, only stills. Then one day a client went, can Scott direct the video as well? And I thought, quickly Googled what directing a video meant. And I went, yeah, that sounds like a, a breeze. Off I went and I directed it. All good. Then we got a smaller job come through. And they were like, can Scott, can Scott shoot the video? And I was like, yeah, probably. Don't really know how, but I'll hire a DOP, Director of Photography. They'll do all the camera gubbins. I'll direct it. Very good. Now, since this point, and this was just before COVID, we got back into work and every single job seemed to have a moving image element to it. There was always like, we need stills and video. We need stills and stop motion. This has become the norm. Now, thankfully, because I do this YouTube stuff, I'm a dab hand in DaVinci Resolve. The reason I have such an elaborate YouTube camera is because we actually use it for commercial work and it doubles up for YouTube. This is a Blackmagic 6K. Nobody needs this for a YouTube camera, like a Sony little point and shoot, it's ample as I've proved by some of the highest viewed videos being on a point and shoot camera here, but it, it does make for ease. So if you're shooting stills now and you want to remain relevant, you need to get into video and stop motion. I'm gonna show you the basic minimum bit of kit you need to make this work. There's not a great deal more you'll need from your still stuff, but there is some stuff that'll be very, very useful. Some of this was given to me, some of it I owned already, and, and also I'm using Small Rig stuff because they gave it to me, but just to give you context here, all of this Small Rig stuff. There's another brand called Tilter. Small Rigs is cheaper, and I'm just not that hard on this kit. It just sits on a tripod, like it does the job. So let's dive in. This light stand is not the height I thought it was going to be. First of all, you need some lighting. Videos use LEDs nowadays, stills use flash. Now you can use LED for stills, but it's not enough light. But for this here, this is a 200 watt sort of LED. We've got a little Octobox in the front of it now. And this is why no one ever sponsors my videos. Small rigs call this a parabolic softbox. It is not parabolic. Firstly, it's got diffusion on the front, so any parabolic is gone. Secondly, it's the wrong shape to be parabolic. And thirdly, the light's facing in the wrong direction. There's nothing parabolic about this. However, it is a great octobox, which is actually what it is. Um, and it's very easy to put together. This bit of kit here, it is not robust like an aperture kit, but it does cost a fraction of the price and it'll get the job done. And we're business people here. We're not just creatives and we're definitely not gearheads. We're business people. This here is enough to shoot an ad campaign on. I know, I used it. Very good bit of kit. Very light, just easy. Light goes up, light goes down. Not much to worry about. Now, another thing you're gonna need is a tripod and a video tripod. It is slightly different. They have these fluid heads on them. They don't have all the tilty, all the rest of it. Video tripods are very useful. This is the Small Rigs one. It is insanely cheap. Um, it is insanely light. It is good enough. And again, this is getting into video. This is not me saying you can shoot the next Hollywood blockbuster on it. This stuff here is your entry to the, the world of video. If you use a normal cheap tripod for stills, it'll wobble too much. And again, I know because I did. These have these extra sturdy bits at the bottom, which make it less wobbly. That is useful stuff to have. That is the sort of thing you need. Now, something I didn't know I wanted on all my stills cameras, but now do, is a cage. Video comes with a whole host of accessories. You need audio, you need monitors, all these things you need, and you need focus pulling and all the rest of it, but you need something to attach it with. And having a cage basically gives you all of these little screws around it so you can put stuff on it like this. This is a focus pull. See here, you can focus from here to here. You can put little stops on it as well. So you can go, I'm gonna pull focus from that to that whilst you're pouring the drink, and there you go, and it'll stop exactly where you need it to. That's very useful. Now, in the high-end commercial work, we use a robot. 
they cost over a million pounds. This does not. Now, again, I have some slightly fancier stuff. We have wireless ones with super sharp monitors that cost thousands and thousands, but that's not getting into video. That's I'm in video. When you're getting into it, this is enough. I mean, for a long time, I just used my hand. I didn't know these existed because I'm not from the video world. I didn't know you could get a little focus. I just thought you had to very carefully slide your hand across the top to try and make it focus. Nobody told me. But there we go, focus pull, very useful bit of stuff. Now, in the industry, you'll have somebody who just pulls focus. So if you get a big job, you have a guy called the Sharps guy, and they sit there, you get ready to film, they've got their little wireless monitor on a terror deck, and they've got their little wireless focus thing, and they're sat there with their glasses on, looking very, very concentrated at the screen, and we go, right, are we ready? Someone will say rolling for the camera, the sound person will say speed, or sound and speed sometimes, and the Sharps person will say Sharps, and then you go, and action. At which point you film. And afterwards, sometimes the sharps person, if it's been particularly difficult, they'll be like, can we have another take just for sharps? And that's because they've messed up the focus because it's really hard to do. If the camera's moving, the focus is going and all this stuff. But a lot of video commercial stuff, and this is really important here, a lot of it has very little movement. And there's a reason for that, and it's because of digital billboards. Digital billboards at the roadside are becoming more and more common, but you can't have too much motion on them if they're next to a road because it's distracting for the drivers. You're allowed a small amount of motion, which is undefined. We've had stuff rejected, which has hardly any, and we've had stuff accepted, which seems to be like a whirlwind. So you need a lot of the video to be very simple. You need nice, good light, steady camera so it's not shaking, and you need focus. They are the fundamentals of it. And if you're doing stop motion, buy an intervalometer as well. And a little pro trick here, if you're doing stop motion, apertures are not all created equally. If you set this to F8 and it fires 10 frames, it'll be anywhere from F7 so to So what F9, you have to do, frame to frame, and disclaimer, this might kill your camera. Good junk, good is push down the depth of field preview button, hit the lens release, and just disconnect the lens enough so the aperture reads zero, zero. At this point, your blades are fixed in position, and as you fire the frame, the blades don't open and close. Stop just getting flickering in your stop motions. So that's the way the industry is going. I'm doing so much more video work now, not just because of YouTube, but also commercially. Every test shoot we do, there's a video element to it. And it is now absolutely the case that photographers are getting booked for the stills, the moving image and directing positions. And recently I got booked to be, because I shot the stills part of a campaign, they wanted me to go on set for the TV part to make sure the lighting married up. So there's all this extra work, all this extra scope that you need to be learning how to do it. So get your camera, go and download DaVinci Resolve and get cracking. See you soon. Bye-bye.